Every now and then you come across a deep sky object that is just slightly too large for your setup. Or maybe it isn't, it actually fits in there perfectly, but you wanna include some of the surrounding area around that object and just take a much wider picture using what you have. Either way, this is where mosaics come into play. In this video, we're gonna go over how to take a mosaic using the ASIR Plus. So the first thing you're probably wondering is what is a mosaic? A mosaic is a composite picture where you take tiles or more commonly in the astrophotography community, panels, and you merge them all together to create one cohesive picture. Now this technique is used in both wide field and deep sky astrophotography. If you look right here on screen, this Milky Way shot that you may have seen that I used to use in my intro, this is actually a mosaic. It's a three panel mosaic stacked vertically on top of itself. In the case of deep sky, objects, it can be used to pull more detail out of the specific object you are imaging, but then you stitch it all together and just create a larger, more detailed picture. So the first thing you want to do is pick a target, and tonight we're going to be doing the North American Nebula. If you look here on screen, using Stellarium with the Zewo ASI 294MC Pro and the William Optic Xenostar 61, the North American Nebula is just slightly too big to fit the entire thing in this field of view. So what I'm going to do is take a two panel mosaic. And what that'll do is it'll allow the entire North American Nebula to fill the frame. All right, so now that we're out here, the next thing you wanna do with mosaic planning is go ahead and open up the Telescopius uh, website on the same tablet or phone that you're using to control the ASIR. Now, I already have the ASIR doing a few test shots on the North American Nebula just to make sure that everything is looking good. But while it does that, we can move on and get Telescopius set up. So the first thing you wanna do is uh, go ahead and sign in. If you don't have an account, you'll need to make one, and you can use Google or Facebook or Twitter, it doesn't matter. Just use one of mine and that works out just fine. Okay, once you're signed in, in the upper right, you're gonna wanna tap on the icon for your account and uh, go to equipment. Once you're in here, you'll wanna add in everything you're using, so telescopes, camera lenses, and your cameras. Your mount really doesn't matter for this, but you wanna get those added. And after you have everything added from this screen, go ahead up to the search and look for whatever it is you're gonna shoot. So for me doing the North American Nebula, it'll be NGC 7000. Okay, and it'll show a nice little preview of an image that somebody else took. And because I've already done one mosaic with this, uh, this is what it looks like. And this is what I wanna continue with actually tonight. Now the way to set this up is you click on the telescope icon and put whatever it is you're using. So I'm gonna put the uh, Z61 here and then go to the camera one and do the same thing there. Put your main camera in. And then to set up your mosaic, whether you're doing a two panel, a four panel or whatever, you just wanna change these drop downs to match whatever it is you wanna do. And to be safe for processing, set the overlap to about 20%. That way when you stack it all together, all the stars can align and it'll work out. Okay, and now we're actually gonna go back to the ASI Air app and see what that preview looked like and make sure everything lines up. And when you switch back to the ASI Air app, if you're somewhere where you don't have internet and you have to use your phone to tether to get to Telescopius like I did, then you might have to switch between your Wi-Fi networks until you get this done. Now we can see that the uh, Cygnus wall is down here and that's pretty much where we want it, but there's one thing that we need from the Air app to put into Telescopius to make sure this all works out. Go ahead and tap on the plate solve button and then note the angle. That is something you're gonna need. So we can go ahead and cancel out of there and then just switch Wi-Fi's and go back to Telescopius. So now that we're back in Telescopius, what we wanna do is click on the camera icon and then down here where it says position angle, whatever your angle was, change it to that. Then you can tap out of here. And if you look, this is what the framing will look like with how I have it set up tonight. Now it is a little bit off from another set of data that I got, but it's not too far off and it is salvageable, so that's good. Now, from here, what you do to set this up is go back to the panel thing and then just click on Copy CSV. And then we're gonna switch back to the ASI Air app for the rest of the night. Hey, in the ASI Air app, what you wanna do is go to the plan mode and then click on the little lines there. Now, I already had this before, like I said, but I'm gonna go ahead and just cancel all of this out. 
And the way to bring in that CSV that we copied from Telescopius is click on this little box with the arrow and then just hold down and paste and then just import. And now this has everything that we need. So we treat this uh, pane one here thing exactly like setting up auto run mode. So you click on the plus, do your lights, and I'm gonna do two minute shots. And I'm going to set this up to do 45 frames. Now keep in mind that when you do this, you do 45 frames here, every single pane that you do, it's gonna set 45 frames for those as well. Or say you are doing 30 frames or whatever. Just keep in mind that when you set this up that you allow enough time for the entire thing to run. That way you can get all of the data for all the panels. And you wanna make sure you account for stuff like dithering and meridian flips as well. So short yourself out maybe by five to 10 frames just to allow some room. And because of the time it is now, I'm actually gonna back this off to 40. And then just hit okay. And then when you back out of there, it'll say apply sequence to everything, just say yes. And now both panes will be there. And I can see that the estimate time to end is uh, just before two o'clock. So I kind of want to go back in and set it to uh, 45 seconds again. So what you do is you tap on details, go back to the lights, hit okay. Do the same thing here. And what that did was it gave it an extra hour. Now it's actually gonna be getting to astronomical twilight around 3.30. Actually with the way that that timing works out, I'm gonna set it to 50. That's a little bit better. Now with dithering and everything else, it's gonna slow it down and actually finish closer to three o'clock. But this is my two panel mosaic. The other thing that you wanna do too, before importing your settings, is up here in the upper right, click on the gear and just name it whatever you wanna name it. For the start and end, I'm just gonna set it to start now because it's after 11 o'clock. In the end, I'll just have it end when the plan ends. Now, I don't want it to turn off the cooler because I am gonna be doing a couple calibration frames but it can go to home position. If there is a meridian flip, you wanna make sure that's enabled. But after that, everything is already set. All you have to do is back out and hit run. And it'll start. So whether you're taking a two panel mosaic or a four panel mosaic, it'll start going through everything and it'll slew for you and you can just sit back and watch. That's really all there is to it. Now I will go over processing these in a later video. When that's available, it'll show up on screen here in a second. But like I said, that's all there is to it. If you found this video helpful, please do like, comment, and then maybe consider subscribing. And thank you for watching. Clear skies.